Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. In this tutorial, I wanted to take a look at a really cool new plugin that just came out from D16 Group called Punchbox. It's a kick drum synthesizer, bass drum synthesizer. It's a really, really cool tool. I'm absolutely in love with it already. In fact, I'll be doing a full course on this next month. But to get started, this is a pretty straightforward kind of 500 series rack mount look to it. And we've got a couple of different sections. First, I'll let you hear some of the kicks that it's, it's actually synthesizing. Then I'll talk about some of the controls. So you can see there's a huge variety just in the presets. And in fact, this actually comes with a ton of presets, 800 of them, as well as 1,100 samples, and they're all really well tagged and labeled. So to get started here, we'll look at this control section up top. Here we have our browsing, as well as if we command click on a Mac, we get these kind of shift functions up here. So we can go previous or next, choose different presets, and we can go to the browse menu. And we can see here we have both factory and user once you configure user presets. And we can see that we have a whole bunch of filters with kind of mode, sample, sign, 606, 808, 909. And we can also toggle the filters back and forth in terms of the sort function. So we can look at different types, acoustic and live, analog modular, key track, process sub, etc., etc. And then we also have a bunch of presets that are specified for certain genres. But I think it's really cool that you can actually choose the filter order and in terms of how you're filtering your presets. But when we're in there, we also can initialize, again, by command clicking to get the, the shift type function or reload a particular plugin. And so we'll just browse in here and grab an 808 EDM and hit OK. Pretty straightforward. If we go to the next one in the browse, we, again, we just hit these. If we want to reload the plugin because maybe we made some tweaks or something and want to go back to the original, we just click. So if I, for example, Tweak a bunch of these. I want to reload. There we go, just like that. We can also, and this is one of the really cool features, if we're running in a maybe in a really heavy session, we don't want to necessarily take up all the CPU headroom. We can always export the kick we created as a WAV file. We could use our sample rate up to 192 and our bit depth from 16 up to 32 bit. We also have a save as or a drag and drop. So they've really thought of a lot of things in terms of the export function. And next we have a random, which lets us choose or block out certain things we do or don't want to randomize. A really cool way to just dive in and find some new and interesting sounds regardless. And that stays active until we turn that back off. But let's see what we came up with. Pretty cool stuff here. And then we have our options which lets us look at some basic changes to presets and to look at loading a MIDI CC map. So very cool stuff there. If we click the about, we just get exactly how that's, you know, registration information and whatnot. Pretty straightforward master section there. Moving into the more important stuff, we have four different generator banks, and then we have five different effects processors. The way they work here is we can activate or turn on or off any of these particular ones. As far as the generators go, they each have a different kind of character or aspect, and all of them have their own particular browse function to load a sample, for example, if it's sample-based anyway. And so here we have the click, which is a sample-based to produce like the accent tone of the kick. Right there, we can right-click on it. One note though, on a Mac, because Mac doesn't necessarily automatically have a right-click, control-click does not work. That works for some plugins, but this one it does not. But one workaround for that real quick is if you come up here and load this free plugin called Magic Prefs, it'll let you do all kinds of customization to your MacBook trackpad, your Magic Mouse, or your Smart Pad. If you're having any issues with, with clicking or mouse control with plugins or DAWs, that's a really simple and free workaround for that. Anyway, so the click is letting us add our accent here. And again, we can load a particular one of those. We also have our tops which is sample based as well. And it produces things like the more hi-hat and percussion type sounds, our noise sounds. Again, and we're blending all of these in together. And then the next one, the tools, is also sample based and it's almost a full kick by itself. We can turn some of these off and just listen to in particular. 
we can hear that this is a pretty full-fledged kick. It doesn't have some of that sub character, which is what the kick generator is generally for. But we got a pretty good starting sound for a kick. And we again have tons of great kick samples to start from. And we have an autoplay mode for our browsing as well. So we can come through and just kind of really quickly toggle through with our arrow keys and whatnot. Pretty well thought out design in that regard for browsing. And the last of the four kick modules is our generator. And this works in a couple different modes. We have a sample based mode. And let me turn off my plugins as well. And so now we have a basic sample mode where we can load a particular sample. We also have modes based on the, the 909, the 808, and the 606 drum synths as well as a sine wave generator. A lot of flexibility there. Pretty cool. Go ahead and just load up a basic kick. And so we can combine each of these four different kick modules together. Each of these has its own set of controls. These are all fairly similar. We have a volume, uh, stereo spread, panning, some filters, high and low cut, as well as decay and tuning. So pretty straightforward there. And then we also have this interesting thing. We have a send here at the bottom. And the send is more of a, a blend of sending it into the effects section. Think of it as a wet dry. So we can actually do some basic mixing here. And the, the generator here has the, not only the kick send, but we can also trigger on a velocity sensitivity and our key track. And our key track actually lets it change pitch as we hit a different key on the keyboard. So very useful for some applications. Again, as with all of these, if we right click, we can choose to assign it to a MIDI parameter. And I'll just hit learn on my keyboard. And there we go. And so now I can toggle that on and off with my MIDI controller. So pretty effective uh, way of interface in you know, all of these. Moving on to the next section, we have these five different effects processes. And each of them can be turned off independently and we can drag and drop them. And there's a lot of neat attention to detail here. I love how when you pull this aside, you can actually see the virtual the rack behind it and the circuit board. This just lets us change the sequence. And the other thing we have here is a mix down after. So it actually lets us specify where the mixing process tends to happen, where it combines everything. So mix it down after the bit crusher or the distortion or after the EQ or what have you. And the ability to do that as well as swapping where the samples go really makes a big difference. So we can't change the sequence of the limiter. It's always last but everything else we can reorganize and we can choose what point in the signal chain we're summing into this output limiter. So in the output limiter, we have both our threshold and our output, as well as a gain reduction and output meter and a nice clip indicator. And looking at these four different effects processors here, we have our EQ, which has both a high band, uh, parametric style mid band and a low frequency. And we also have a bit crusher here and the bit crusher lets us affect preamp, low cut, quantization and sampling frequency. And then there's a resample filter. And there's some great presets for both this one and for the distortion plugin. In combination with say the EQ, bring up a little low end. And we can change where that signal is all mixing into that limiter. So looking at our distortion, we have a couple different shapes to start with. And we have both dynamics and preamp we can adjust. Uh, low cut and contour and an overall tone control. And that's a very responsive tone control, so I'm a big fan of that. I like having a lot of character control right at my fingertips with one knob, especially tied to the volume here. And there's a lot of different, different variations between the distortions. Plenty of presets to look at. And definitely a nice almost analog character, especially as you overdrive that preamp a little bit and tweak the contour up. And of course we have our effects amount. And then lastly we have a filter here. The filter itself will let us handle a cutoff in Hertz as well as uh, filter resonance, which is always good for adding a nice little 
bit of character. This is the filter slope from 12 dB or 24 dB. And then we can actually choose low pass, band pass, or high pass filter. Very effective filtering controls. We also have this blending effect tool. So this is a max filter. We can pull that back a little bit. And we can just use that to kind of filter in parallel to bring out different aspects of the sound. So this is a really cool plugin. I think that if you're doing a lot of stuff that really relies upon nuances and subtleties in your kicks, it's really well worth considering. Like I said, it's got over 800 presets and 1100 samples that are well tagged. And then we can also create our own tags in the user library as we're creating our own samples. The randomizer alone is a great way to kind of explore the options and what's possible with this tool. I've only used this in a couple of tracks so far, and it is not that much of a memory hog. It works pretty well. It definitely seems like a great way to both build up your own custom kick library and to preserve processor power is to use that again, that export function right up here. And uh, just great opportunities to generate all kinds of cool kicks and then build up stuff for your library or just to lighten up that processor load on your track. So there you go, a great look at a really cool new tool, the Punchbox Bass Drum Synth from D16. I'm really looking forward to diving into this plugin a little bit more and developing a whole course for it, as I said, for next month. So definitely stay tuned for that if this is a plugin you're thinking about picking up. Until then, I'm Steven Ellistead for ADSR. Thanks for checking this out and make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. Have a great day, take care.